Death is a fact of life. It is a blunt statement to make, but let's face it, at this time we are alive, but we all know for a fact that we will die one day. Moreover, from time to time we are mostly affected by the death of other people, of our loved ones in most cases. No wonder then that people throughout the ages and all over the world have tried to come to terms with death and looked for ways to make sense of the certainty that death is the inevitable end of each and everyone's life on earth. And no wonder either that it has occurred to people throughout the ages and all over the world that there must be something, some different kind of life after death. In other words, that death is not the absolute end of everything but the beginning of something new something that we mortals cannot see, but in which we can believe. In various cultures, a further dimension has been linked to this concept of an afterlife, and that is the idea that this life after death will be a reward for those who have lived a good life and a punishment for those who have been bad. In Judaism, Christianity and Islam, for instance, it is relatively simple. Either you go to heaven or you go to hell. This week we will have a look at how s various other cultures have expressed and depicted these ideas about an afterlife, about the places where people are believed to go after they die and what else happens to them there, and also about the supernatural entities they will encounter there, such as gods, angels or demons. The various scholarly disciplines involved have given different names to these final destinations. As you will see, Egyptologists and the specialists in the study of ancient Greece prefer the words afterworld and underworld, whereas the specialists in the study of ancient Anatolia, Mesopotamia and Iran rather use the term netherworld. To find out what is hidden behind these different terms and about similar concepts in Buddhism and in China, just stay with us.